First of all, it's important to remember what a bad disease rheumatoid arthritis is. It's a disease that doesn't just rot away joints, it can shorten life because it increases the risk of cardiovascular disease and patients can die early. And when we think about that, the treatment for rheumatoid arthritis has improved a lot over the years. There have been two revolutions in treating rheumatoid arthritis. First has been understanding that we need to diagnose it quickly and treat it promptly before damage has occurred. The second revolution has been understanding the science behind the disease and therefore what's causing it and therefore what drugs can be developed to actually treat it. So today the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis revolves around making a quick early diagnosis and giving effective treatment as early as possible. The standard drugs that we use first of all are drugs such as methotrexate and these are tablets that are taken once a week. They help a lot of people, but not everybody. And then if they don't respond, we can move on to the more powerful designer drugs, the protein biologic drugs. And there are many different type of biologic drugs, ranging from TNF blockers through to IL-6 inhibitors. These work really well, they're very effective, but they're also expensive. And because the proteins, they can't be taken in tablet form, they've got to be given as injections or infusions. There's been some exciting developments in treating rheumatoid arthritis and one of them has been the development of JAK inhibitors. Now these are drugs that work in a different way to all the other drugs that we've got. These work inside the cell and they switch off signaling pathways that cause inflammation. These are different to the biologic drugs because biologic drugs are proteins, they've got to be given by injection or infusion whereas the JAK inhibitors are small molecules, so they can be put into tablets and just taken as a tablet once or twice a day. They're also different to the biologic drugs because they don't just block one inflammation chemical, they actually can block a variety of them. And the final difference is that where the biologic drugs are very um, long-acting, the uh, JAK inhibitors have a very short half-life, so when you, when you, if you want to stop them quickly, that can be very effective. I think JAK inhibitors are set to make big differences in the way that we treat rheumatoid arthritis. It's very convenient for patients to take a tablet rather than give themselves an injection. And when we think the JAK inhibitors work just as well as the injection drugs, there's a lot of opportunity here to actually start these drugs sooner on patients and actually stop them having to have injections or infusions. We know that the JAK inhibitors work just as well as the biologic drugs and they're certainly far more convenient for the patients. Whenever we're starting a new treatment we've got to be very careful about what the pros and cons are. We need to know whether the drug works, whether it's safe and how practical it is to give. What we're finding with the JAK inhibitors that these drugs are very effective, they work quickly and really if a patient has got rheumatoid arthritis, if they're not responding to the standard first line drugs, normally in the past we'd think of moving on to a biologic drug but today we've got the option of going straight to a JAK inhibitor. Also if patients have got bad disease, they failed on the first line drugs, they failed on a biologic drug, then in these patients, JAK inhibitors also can be very effective. It's really helpful that with the JAK inhibitors, we don't need to worry very much about dosing. It's pretty well a standard dose for everybody, whether they're big and fat or whether they're thin. The only situations where we might think about changing the dose is if there's severe liver disease or renal disease. And in those situations, we're a bit more careful and we might give half of the dose. But then on the other hand, in some situations when people have got liver or renal problems, there aren't any other choices. So having the JAK inhibitors that can work in some of these patients is a big advantage. JAK inhibitors work in a totally different way to the other drugs that we've got for rheumatoid arthritis. The biologic drugs, which we previously thought of as amongst the best drugs, they work outside the cell and they block individual inflammation chemicals or cytokines. The JAK inhibitors are small molecules will get inside the cell and they work by blocking or inhibiting important signaling pathways that are important in inflammation. 
So these drugs work in a very different way and they also work in a very targeted way. They'll block some of the inflammation signaling pathways that result in inhibition of a variety of inflammation cytokines. And that's different to the biologic drugs that will just block individual cytokines. So blocking a selection of them can be an advantage. Also, these are reversible interactions and these work for a short period of time. So if there's a problem with the patient, for example, an infection, you can stop the JAK inhibitors quickly and the effects on the patient stop quickly. And that can really help with safety. We've now got almost 10 years of safety data on the JAK inhibitor tofacitinib. What we're finding when we look at the safety is that's broadly similar to the biologic drugs. We're not seeing signals for anything really bad going on. We don't see signals for nasty infections more than the uh, biologic drugs and we don't see any signals for malignancy. So broadly speaking, these drugs don't only work as well as the biologic drugs, but the safety profile is extremely similar and that's very reassuring. There's one situation that's slightly different though and that's people that come from Japan or Korea are much more likely to have uh, activation of herpes zoster and have bad shingles when they're taking a JAK inhibitor. That doesn't seem to be the case in people from other countries though and we don't fully understand as to why that's an issue for people from Japan or from Korea. Although, of course, in some situations that can be reduced a little bit by vaccinating patients, but that's not needed for everybody. The JAK inhibitor drug development program includes perhaps one of the largest set of clinical trials for any drug to date. And that's really reassuring for a variety of ways. First of all, lots of different patients have been studied, so we have a good idea about how JAK inhibitors work throughout rheumatoid arthritis, whether it's early in disease before any other drug, or in much more severe disease when there's all sorts of drugs been tried and failed. So it's reassuring that it can work across all different types of rheumatoid arthritis. It's also very encouraging to know that it's been studied in many, many patients. There have been loads of patients for a long period of time, therefore the safety data is really credible and really believable. We know that JAK inhibitors work extremely well. We know that they work at least as good as the biologic drugs. But one important difference is that most of the biologic drugs, they're all proteins, but most of them are also antibodies. And these antibodies can stimulate antibodies against the drug. And an anti-drug antibody can uh, reduce the effectiveness of a drug. That's an issue for many biologic drugs. But as a small molecule, tofacitinib and JAK inhibitors don't stimulate an immune response and therefore when patients respond to them, they're not going to develop anti-drug antibodies and the data shows that that response will persist and that's really important.